the oxen if we had to. Are you folks going to worry, Alma? No. Dad said before I left, he bet this would happen. Well, you better come back here and help me. The bus will be here any minute, and we've got to have things ready. Nights like this, I'm sure glad I have a home to go to. Well, i got a home to go to, but there ain't anyone in it. Where's your husband now, Grace? How should I know? Well, don't you miss him? No. If he came walking in right now, wouldn't you be glad to see him? You ask more questions. I'm just curious about things, Grace. Well, could your age are? I don't know. I'd be happy to see him, I guess, if I knew he wasn't going to stay very long. But don't you get lonesome when you're not working down here? Sure I do. If I didn't have this restaurant to keep me busy, I'd probably go nuts. Sometimes a night after I empty the garbage and lock the doors and turn out the lights, I get kind of a sick feeling, because I sure don't look forward to walking up those stairs and letting myself into an empty apartment. But gee, if you feel that way, why don't you just write your husband and tell him to come back? Because I got just as lonesome when he was here. He wasn't much company, except when we were making love. But making love is one thing, and being lonesome is another. The rest of the time, me and Barton was usually fighting. My parents seem to get along pretty well. I mean, they really seem to like each other. Oh, I know all married people aren't like Barton and I, not all. Now, maybe I can get the operator. Quiet as a two. I like working here with you, Grace. Do you, honey? I'm glad because I should have known what I'd do without you. We can get weekends especially. You know what? You're ready the job at first. Why? But you wouldn't have time for all your boyfriends. Maybe you'd have more boyfriends and you didn't make such good grades. Boys are kind of embarrassed because they feel like they're as smarter than they are. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Flunk all my courses? I should say not. You're a good kid and you've got good sense. I wish someone could have reasoned with me when I was your age, but I was a headstrong brat. Had to have my own way. I had my own way, all right, and here I am now, a grass widow running a restaurant, and I'll probably die in this little town, and they'll bury me out by the back house. Evening. You girls been able to get the operator? No, well, the operators don't answer. That means all the lines are down. About time for the peak of bus, ain't it? Do now. Gonna have to hold him here? Don't know for how long. Highway's blocked, maybe all night getting it cleared. I'm afraid of that. They got the highway gang working on <coughs> it, and the telephone company is trying to get the lines back up, but March is coming like a line. Yeah. <coughs> Station house is cold. You got any fresh coffee in here? Just went through, Will. It's fresh as you can want it. You know, this store makes me mad. It does. It makes me mad. It's like the elements lost all their reasoning. Nothing you can do about a wind like that. Yes, it's just because I'm a sheriff, and I like to see things in their place. Let the wind blow. I just pray to God to leave a roof over my head. That's about all a person can do. It's here now. Better fill some water glasses, Alma. Remember, there's no nothing left over from yesterday. But it'll be a right to serve them. We've got everything for the sandwiches but cheese. We got no cheese. You never got any cheese, Grace. I guess it's because I'm kind of self-centered, Will. I don't care for cheese myself, so I never think to order it for someone else. I'm sure glad I'm not traveling on that bus tonight. I wonder who's driving tonight. This is Carl's night, isn't it? I think so. Yes, it is. Remember, honey, I always serve Carl. Bus. No! I met him in Kansas City. I work at the Blue Dragon Nightclub down by the 
stockyards, and he come in with the annual rodeo, and him and the rest of the cowboys was there, and every night, and every night there was a big fight. Boss says he ain't gonna let the cowboys in when they come back next year. So he followed you on the bus. Hey, put me on the bus! I'm being abducted! Abducted? But you took time to pack his suitcase. I was going somewhere else, trying to get away from him, but he picked me up and carried me to the bus and put me on it. I didn't have nothing to say about it at all. Well, where's he planning on taking you? He said he's got a ranch up in Montana. So we're gonna get married as soon as we get there. And you're against it. I don't wanna go to some godforsaken ranch in Montana. Well, if he's taking you against your will, I'll have to put a stop to it. You just don't know this cowboy. He's mean. I reckon I can handle him. Now relax, and if there are any problems, I'll put a stop to it. Oh, you don't have to worry with Will here. Will's very respected around here. He's never lost a fight. Whoa, whoa wait a minute. <laughs> Who said I never lost a fight? I did once. No, Grace always said you were invincible. Ain't no one who's invincible, Alma. A man's got to learn what it's like to lose a fight. The sooner he learns that, the better. That's what makes the difference between a fighter and a bully. There's going to be trouble here. I can feel it in my bones. Ah, this castle hath a pleasant seat. Could I have my suitcase behind the counter so he won't see when he comes in? I ain't gonna say nothing to him at all. I'm not going on to Montana with him. I'm just gonna let him think that I'm going till the bus pulls out and he finds I ain't on it. That's the only thing I know to do. Well, you needn't worry with Will here. Think so? Well, Will's a very religious man. The Jubilee is even a deacon in the Congregational Church. My folks was holy rollers. Will you give me a cup of coffee, please? Lots of cream. Ah, the Colonel, you bring this switch? No, it brought me. I'm <laughs> a comedian. The wind is doing 90 miles an hour. The bus is doing 20. <laughs> What's your guess about the wind, Will? Well, if they flop, the highway gang's working on it, though. Telephone lines are down, too? Yeah, but they're working on them also. Driving. It, it seems to me that we're still in the state of Kansas. I, is that right? What do you mean, still? You've been in the state of Kansas for about half an hour. But I don't understand. When I left Kansas City, I was told I'd be across the state line immediately. But now I'm kind of anxious to get across the state line, too, wasn't you, Jack? Why? Whatever do you mean? Nothing. Anyways, you're across the state line now, and in case you didn't know it, Kansas City is in Missouri. Are you joking? There's a Kansas City, Kansas, too. But you got into Kansas City, Missouri. That's the trouble with the reasoners. You know anything of any country west of the Hudson River. Come, come now, don't scold. Carl, let me have your coat for you. We get warm at the stove. Nymph in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. I'm sorry your bus is held up. Oh, is that a nice way to greet me? I mean, After my most loving greeting, all you can say is, I'm sorry your bus is held up. Well, I'm not. I'd much rather be sitting here looking to the innocent brown of your eyes than to continue riding on that monotonous bus. Well, don't you have to get somewhere? Well, I've a ticket in my pocket to Denver. But I don't have to get there. I don't have to get anywhere. I travel from one town to another just to prove to myself that I'm free. Well, the bus probably won't get into Denver for another day. Oh, well. What is our next stop? Topeka. Topeka. Oh, yes, that's where that famous hospital is, isn't it? Oh, the manager clinic? Yes, it's a very famous place. Well, lots of movie stars go there for the nervous breakdowns and things. Does the town offer anything else in the way of diversion? Well, it's the capital of Kansas. It's almost as big as Kansas City. And it's got a university and a museum and sometimes symphony concerts and plays. I go there every Sunday to visit my married sister. Aren't there any... Indian tribes there that have uh, war dances. <laughs> no, silly, we're very civilized. I shall make my own judgments about that. In the meantime, you may fix me a double shot of rye whiskey on the rocks. Well, I'm sorry, sir, we don't serve drinks. You don't sell drinks? Well, not intoxicating drinks, no, sir. Alas. But we have fresh coffee and homemade cakes and pies and all kinds no, of things. No, my dear, you are not going to sober me up with your dainties. I've come prepared for these emergencies. You may fix me a, a bottle of your finest lemon soda. You better not let Will see you do that. You're not supposed to. Who 
Was he the sheriff? Oh, yeah. People come in here and spike their drinks all the time, and we never say anything. But if Will saw you, he'd have to make you stop. I have to be most cautious. I promise. No call. I don't envy you driving in this weather. Yeah. Watch is coming in like a lion. Indeed. I uh, say, this saw the passengers you got? There's a couple crazy cowboys rolled up in the back seat of sleep. I thought I'd welcome, but I guess I didn't. Well, shouldn't you do it now? I just thought they'd stay with the rat. But one of them's a real troublemaker. You know the kind, first them off the ranch and wild as a bronco. He's run this make, this little uh, redhead down here. So she was telling me. I've had a good mind to put off the bus the way he's been acting. Yeah. I'd say it's a time and a place for everything. Yeah, but the bus will be getting snowbound pretty soon. I'll wake him in a minute, Well. Just let me have a little time here. Sure. You know what, Grace? This is the first time you and I had any more than 20 minutes together. So what? I don't know. I'd be here most of the night. And it would sure be nice having an apartment to go to. Some place where we can sit and listen to the radio and talk. <coughs> a good looking woman. Something like you. Maybe have a few beers. That wouldn't be a hint or anything, would it? Why, do an apartment like that, Grace? Yes, I do. But I never told you about it. Did that ornery Dobson fella to you I had an apartment over the restaurant? Dobson? Dobson? I can't seem to remember anyone named Dobson, Grace. You know better than I do. He comes through here twice a week with the Southwest bus. He told me you and him meet the Topeka sometimes and paint the town. Dobson? Oh, yeah, I know Vernon Dobson, a prince of a fella. Look, he's been gabbing to you about my apartment. I can tell you he's only been up there once. When he come in here with his hand cut, and I took him up there to bandage it. And that's the only time he was ever up there, on my word of honor. Oh, Vernon Dobson speaks very highly of you, Grace. Very highly. Well, he better. Now, what are you going to have? Make a ham and cheese on rice. Sorry, Carl, but we got no cheese. Oh, what happened? Did the mice get it? None of your wife remarks. OK, make a ham on rye, then. Sorry, Carl. I can vouch for that, sir. <laughs> I just asked for I myself and was refused. Look, mister, don't you think you should lay off that stuff to get home and meet the missus? <laughs> the missus, did you say? I have no missus, sir. I'm free. I travel the universe with no one to wait on my arrival anywhere. That's all I ever get on my bus is drugs and hoodlums. How's your whole week, Carl? OK, let's make it whole week. Yes, I am free. My third and last wife deserted me several years ago for a ball player. Your third? Yes, my third. You know, getting married is a close habit I've fallen into. You know, I really must stop some bit. Oh, but she was pretty. Redhead, like that one over there. And southern, too. Or at least she pretended to be. However, she was nicer than all the others when we parted. She didn't care about money. All she cared about was finding new marital bliss with her ball player. So I never did have to pay her an alimony. As if I could. <laughs> My second wife was of a different type entirely. Oh, but she was very pretty too. You know, I've always exercised the most excellent taste, if not the best judgment. She was a student of mine when I was teaching at an Eastern University. But alas, she sued me for a divorce on the grounds that I was incontinent and always drunk. <coughs> I didn't have a chance to resign from that position. Hey! How much them donuts? Well, I'll make you a special price. Two for 50 cents. OK. That time of year thou mayst me behold, when yellow leaves or none of you do hang upon these boughs. I never was so cold in my life. Older. Was they mean? 
Anyway, I had to quit school when I was 12 to take care of the house and do the cooking. I'm a real good cook, honest. Did you study singing? Uh-uh, I just picked it up, listening to the radio and seeing movies, trying to put over my songs, good as them people did. Well, how'd you get started in the nightclub? I won an amateur contest down in Joplin, Missouri. I won second prize there. A couple of boys won first prize. They juggled milk bottles. I don't think that's fair, do you? To make an artistic performer compete with knife throwers and jugglers and people like that. No, I don't. Anyway, second prize is good enough to get me to Kansas City to enter the contest there. And it was a real big contest, and I didn't win no prize at all. But it was good enough to get me the job at the Blue Dragon. Is that where you're from? Joplin? No, Joplin's a big town. I live about 100 miles from there in River Gulch, a little town in the Ozarks. I lived there till three, ago, three years ago this spring. The floods came and washed us all away. Gee, that's too bad. I don't know where any of my folks are now, except my baby sister Nan. I took Nana to Joplin with me when the floods came, and she got, got a job as a waitress, and I went to work at Liggett's Drugstore until the amateur contest opened. Must be fun working in a nightclub. But ain't all roses. Are you going to be here a while, Will? I'm right, good Carl. I'm going to send them cowboys in here now for me to look after Fine, I'll do my best. Say something else, Will. Uh-huh. No, I'll be jigging. I so say you better keep an eye on him, too. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, sick call. You know they're coming back later? Oh, well, to tell the truth, I get so darn slips in at that wheel all day. I think I'll go for a long walk. Walk in this weather? Have you gone crazy? Oh, I like to go for walks in the rain and snow. It, it freshens a fella up. Sometimes, I like to walk for hours. You do, huh? Yeah. For hours. That's just the type of fellow I am, Will. Imagine. Going for a walk in a night like this. Well, it's really very good for one, Will. It really is. <laughs> sure. He said he was going to wake him up. That he'll be in here pretty soon. <coughs> you won't let on that I said anything about him, will you? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Why, that's one of my favorite sonnets. It is. Do you read Shakespeare? Well, I study him at school, in English class. I love the sonnets. I even memorize some of them myself. I know all of them by heart and many of the plays I could recite in their entirety. I did so for the entertainment and the annoyance of my friend. Last fall, I memorized the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. A boy in my class played Romeo. We presented it for convocation one day. Uh, I wish I'd been there to see. Where I went to school, we didn't read no Shakespeare till the ninth grade. In the ninth grade, everyone read Julius Caesar. I only got as far as the eighth. I seen Marlon Brando in the movie, though. I sure do like that Marlon Brando. Madam. Where is thy Lochinvar? <laughs> I don't understand anything you say, but I sure do love the way you say it. And I understand everything I say, yet privately despise the way I say it. <laughs> That's so cute. I had a very nice friend once I recited poetry. Whatever became of him? I don't know. He left town. His name was Mr. Everett Brubaker, and he sold secondhand cars at the corner of 8th and Wyandotte. He had a lovely Pontiac car with the top down. He talked nice, but I guess he really wasn't any nicer than the others. The others? You meet quite a few men in the place where I work at, the Blue Dragon nightclub down by the stockyards. Did you ever hear of it? No. And I deeply regret the fact. Oh, you're just saying that. An educated man like you wouldn't have no use for the Blue Dragon. I wouldn't. Hey! Why did anyone wake us up? Virgin, I might have froze out there. Hey, shut the door. Cherry, how can we get off the bus without letting me know? Is that any way to treat the man you got to marry? Hey, shut the door. That's no way to treat a fellow, Cherry. Slip off the bus like you're trying to get rid of him, maybe, and then come in here and eat by yourself. I thought we'd have a little snack together. Sometimes I just don't understand you, Cherry. For the hundredth time, my name ain't Cherry. Well, I can't say it the way you do. What's wrong with Cherry? It's kind of embarrassing. 
Carson. Cowboy, would you have the decency to shut that door? Mister, what is the matter with you? Are you afraid of a little fresh air? Why don't you breathe real deep and get your lungs full of it? That's the trouble with y'all city folk. You get soft. Well, he's the sheriff, Bo. Supposing he is the sheriff. What's that matter to me? Don't give him the right to go to so my matters, does it? No man ever had to tell me what to do, did he, Virg? No, Bo, but though he's in the time. For my the name's Bo Decker. I'm 21 years old, and I got my own ranch up in Tinderhill, Montana, where I got a herd of fine Hereford cattle, a dozen horses, and the finest sheep, hogs, and chickens anywhere in the country. And I just come back from a rodeo for our one bad enterprise there was, dinner verge. Yep, I'm the prize Bronco Buster, and Steer Roper, and Bulldog are anywhere around. What's more, I had my picture taken by Life Magazine. So I'd appreciate your talking to me with a little respect in your voice. And don't go hollering according orders to me from across the room like I was some no-count server. Did you ever see anybody like him? The door was open, you were the last one in. You should have closed it. That's all I'm saying. The door's closed now. What are you arguing about? Oh, Verge, seems like we're going to be here for a while. That's just some growth. No, yet, Bo. I'm chewing tobacco. <laughs> That's old Verge for you. Always happy long as he got a lot of tobacco in his mouth. <laughs> well, I'm going to have me a little snack. Miss, uh, could you get about three hamburgers? Three? Well, how do you want them? Oh, I want them raw. Honest? That's the only way to eat them, raw. With a thick slice of onion and some pickle lily. Well, you sure you're not joking? Uh, just a minute, miss. That ain't all. I'd also like me some ham and eggs, uh, some potato salad, and a thick slice of pie. I ain't so particular what kind of pie it is, just so long as it's got that meringue on top of it. We have lemon and chocolate, and they both have meringue. Lemon and chocolate. Gee, I like them both. <laughs> I don't know which I'd rather have. I am both, miss. <coughs> both? Yep, and set a quart of milk beside me. I'm still a growing boy. Yeah. Traveling always picks up my appetite. Cherry, is that all you have? Is just that measly donut? I ain't hungry. Well, you ought to be. Well, I ain't. Just wait till I get you up to the Suzy Q. Well, I fatten you up. I bet in two weeks' time you won't even recognize yourself. There you go, and Cherry, still about the cutest little piece I ever did see. And when I walked into that nightclub place, he was singing my favorite song, and you got up before the orchestra looking like an angel. I told myself then and there, she's for me, and I ain't gonna leave this place without her. And now I got you. Ain't that Terry? Bo, there's people here. They're looking. Supposing they are looking. It's no crime to show a little affection, is it? Especially when we got married. No crime I ever heard of. Bo! Terry, that's no way to talk to your husband. That's all you've done since you left Kansas City. It's balmy. Oh. Oh, is that so? Well, I certainly ain't one to pester anyone with my affection. I never had to beg no woman to make love to me. I never had to coax no woman, dinner verge. <laughs> no. No. Everywhere I go, I got all the women I want. I gotta fight them to keep them off me, dinner verge. The hamburger is ready. All right, these will get in the start. She was the loveliest of them all. I do believe she was. You know, we had an idyllic honeymoon together, a golden month of sunshine and romance in Bermuda. Oh, but alas, she sued me for a divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty, and she persuaded the judge that she should have my house and my motor car, and an alimony that I still find very difficult to pay, for she never chose to marry again. She found out that for all she wanted out of marriage, she didn't have to marry. 
but perhaps I'm being unkind. Miss, was you uh, waiting for me to lay them eggs? <laughs> Henry's just a horse to do for you. Thank you, miss. Say, go on. Sherry? Sherry, is this your suitcase? What's it doing here behind the counter? Sherry, I'm asking you a civil question. What do you want to bring your suitcase in here for? Tell me! Well, I... Now, Bo, don't you come near me! Sherry, what is your suitcase doing there behind the counter? Have you been plotting against me or something? Cherry, have you been trying to get away from me? Now tell me, Cherry. Take your hands off me, Bo Decker! Tell me, Cherry. Take your hands off her, cowboy. <laughs> Mister, you got no right interfering between me and my fiancé. Maybe she is your <laughs> Maybe she is your fiancé. Then again, maybe she ain't. But you ain't gonna abuse her so long as I'm around. Understand? What do you mean, abuse her? I think you better tell him everything now, miss. Well, I... Terry, what is this critter trying to say? Now, Bo, don't get mad! I'll get mad if I feel like it! What have you two got planned? Bo, I don't want to go up to Montana and marry you her. You do, too! I do not! Anyways, you'll come to like it in time. I promised you would. Now we've been through all that before. But, Bo, I ain't going. What?! I ain't going! The sheriff here said he'd help me! He ain't gonna let you take me any further. I'm staying here and taking the next bus back to Kansas City. You ain't gonna do nothing of the kind. Yes, I am, Bo. You gotta believe me. I ain't going with you. That's final. But, Cherry, we were familiar with each other. That don't mean you gotta marry me, Bo. I'll take you across my knee and blister your little bottom. Don't you touch me. Can't listen to what she says, mister. These women folk don't know their own minds and never did. Then you're gonna follow me back Tim, Helen, marry up. You just think you would like it now. Well, because the whole idea is kind of strange, and I'll grant you that. But in no time at all, you're going to be happy as a mud hen, Cherry. Now, I ain't taking no for an answer. You're coming along. Don't you come near me. You're not taking her with you. She don't want to go. Can't you get that through your thick skull? Now leave her be. Mister, this is no business of yours. It's my business when a little lady comes to me for protection. Is that right? Did you go to the sheriff and ask me for protection? Yes. I guess I did. Why? What, what do you need protection for if a man who wants to marry you? Because. Because why? I said I loved you, didn't I? I know you did. See there? I told her I loved her and I want to marry her. And with a world full of crazy people going around killing each other, he ain't got nothing better to do than to stand here trying to keep me from it. You're overlooking just one thing, cowboy. You're so smart. Tell me what I'm overlooking. You're overlooking a simple but important fact. The little lady over here don't love you. Now, go. Take it easy, go. Where's the sheriff, go? You got bad and said she didn't love me. Pay no attention, go. You, you got to think things over, go. Let me be, Burge. Ask her if she loves you. I won't ask her nothing of the kind. Then take my word for it. I wouldn't take your word for party day. I'm telling you she loves me and I ought to know. <laughs> OK. If she ain't getting back on that bus with you, we'll leave it at that. So sit down with your friend over here. Play a nice, quiet game of peanut. So the bus comes by and takes you with it. Do as he says, Bo. I kind of think you got the little lady all wrong anyway. Don't you say nothing against her, Varge? Uh, I ain't saying nothing against her. I just see no reason why I should marry a girl that don't love you. That's all. I kind of doubt she's the kind of girl you think she is. Now, sit down and think things over, Bob. I don't feel like sitting. Uh, what's your suit in him and eggs? Just put them on the stove, ma'am, and keep them warm. You'll have them a little bit later. This, I don't think he'll be bothering you anymore. If he does, my station's just across the road. I can holler. Thank you very much, I'm sure. You're going to be OK, Alma? You sure will. OK. I'll look in on things a little later. You know, I always seem to be more relaxed when a 
sheriff leaves the room. <laughs> I think it's awfully unfair that people dislike Will, well, just because he's a sheriff. But you see, my dear, he stands as a symbol of authority, the most dreaded figure of our time. Policemen, teachers, lawyers, doctors, judges, and I suppose e even tax collectors. We take it for granted they are going to punish us for something we didn't do. Or did do. But you said you were a teacher once. But not a successful one. I could never stand having anyone over me, like deans and presidents and department heads. And I never was a man who could take orders from anyone without feeling resentment. Right or wrong, I've always insisted on having my own way. What am I going to do, Verge? Well, you just got to quit depending on me so much. Well, I don't know what to tell you except sit down and be peaceful. I can't be peaceful. All right, then pace around like a panther. Be miserable. I just can't believe it. What can't you believe? Nothing. Bo, you got anything on your chest? It's best to get it off. I just never realized that a gal might not love me. My last position was at one of those revolting little colleges in the East, where they offer a curriculum of what they call functional education. <coughs> Educators, I'm sure, have always despaired of ever teaching students anything. So they've decided that the second best thing to do is to try to understand them. Every morning there'd be a meeting of everyone who's on the entire faculty, from the president down to the chambermaids, and we would put our collective heads together to try to figure out why little Jane or little Mary wasn't getting out of her classes what she should. Now, the suggestion that she wasn't studying was too simple, but if you implied that she simply did not have the brains for college <coughs> education, you were being undemocratic. You must have disapproved of that college. My dear girl, I have disapproved of my entire life. Yes, but I couldn't resist living in a lower town. Did you resign from that position? One day I decided I had enough. I walked blithely into the dean's office one day and said, Sir, I've graduated magna cum laude from the University of Chicago. I went to Oxford on a Rhodes Scholarship, and I returned to take my PhD at Harvard, receiving it with the highest honors. I think I have the right to expect my students to understand me. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, I didn't wait for a response. I walked out the door and went to the train station and got a ticket for the farthest place I could think of, which happened to be Las Vegas. I've been traveling ever since. It's a merry way to go to college. I hope I might teach one day, but you don't make it sound very attractive. Ah, suit yourself. Don't let me influence you one way or the other. You're a lovely young girl. You say you plan to go to Topeka tomorrow. Oh, you mean today? Yes, I have tickets to hear the Kansas City Symphony. Oh, they give a concert in Topeka every year. You say you visit your sister there. Oh, yeah. And then I take an early morning bus back here in time for school on Monday. And then after school, I come here and work for them. Didn't you say that there was a, a university in Topeka? It's Washburn University. Washburn. Oh, yes. You know, that reminds me. I should pop in there sometime and look upon some research I'm engaged on. Well, I've been to Washburn Library lots of times. You have? Perhaps you could take me there. No. Well, I'll arrive in Topeka before you do, and then I'll meet your bus. If you really want me to. We can go to the library together. And then perhaps we could have some dinner together. And then perhaps you could permit me to take you to the symphony. Are you serious? Well, of course I'm serious. Why do you ask? Then may I depend on it that we have engagement? Oh, yes, it'll be so much fun. But, my dear, let's not tell anyone of our plans, shall we? Why? You see, I have been married, and I am somewhat older than you, though not quite as old as you might take me to be. Anyway, people might not understand. So let's keep our plans to ourselves, shall we? You think it's best? I think it best. That was real pretty, Virgil. Why, thank you.
Elma, build us up for me like the big girl. Sure, what? Just going down the highway a bit to see how the man woman's doing. Thought they might enjoy some fresh coffee. Good idea, Will. Is uh, everyone behaving themselves? Well, of course. Grace isn't down yet, is she? No. I didn't see Carl outside either. Think maybe I should go looking for him? I wouldn't worry about it much. Yeah, you're right. Carl can take care of himself. Thank you, Elma. Oh, by the way, if anybody should be needing me, I won't be gone for very long. <laughs> Sheriff, if it wasn't for him, I'd get you. Where would you take her, Bo? Well, there's a justice of the peace right down the street. You can see a sign from the window. Bo, you can't force a guy to marry you. You just can't do it. Sheriff's stern man, you'd shoot you in a minute if he saw it was his duty. Now, why don't you go to the counter, have a drink, like the professor? I never did drink. I ain't gonna let no woman drive me to it. You don't drink, you don't smoke a chew. You ought to have some bad habits to rely on when things go wrong with women. <laughs> First, I hate to sound like some pity of a weak one of a man, but there's been times the past few months I've just been so lonesome. I don't know what to do with myself. No disgrace to feel that way, Bo. Don't you ever get lonesome too, Verge? A long time ago, I gave up romance. I decided I was just going to take lonesome for granted. I wish I could do that, but I can't. Maybe I'm a sap. Well, why do you say that? I don't know why I just don't go off to Montana and marry him. I feel a lot better off than I am now. He says he loves you. He don't know what love is. Well, what makes you say that? All he wants is a girl to throw his arms around and hug and kiss. The rest of the time, he don't even know I exist. Well, then what made you decide to marry him in the first place? You ain't very experienced, are you? I guess not. I never did decide to marry him. Everything was going fine until he brought up that subject. <coughs> Bo come in went out when I was singing that old black magic. It's one of my best numbers. And he liked it so much, he jumped up on a chair and hollered like an Indian. He put his fingers in his mouth and he whistled like a steam engine. Naturally, it made me feel good. Most of the customers was too drunk to pay any attention to my songs. And you liked it. Well, I did think he was awful cute. I think he looks a little like Jeff Bridges, don't you? Maybe. Anyway, I've never seen a cowboy before. Oh, I'd seen him in the movies, but never in the flesh. And he's so darn healthy looking. I don't mind admitting I was attracted right from the start. You were? But it was only what you might call a sexual attraction. Oh. The very next morning, he wakes up and hollers, Yippee, we're getting married. I honestly thought he was crazy. But when I tried to reason with him, he wouldn't listen to a word. He stayed by my side all day long, like a shadow. At night, of course, he had to go back to the rodeo, but he was back to the Blue Dragon every night in time for a midnight show. If any other fellow claimed to have a date with me, I would beat him up. But you never said you'd marry him? No! He kept telling me all week he and Virg would be by the night the roadie went it, and we'd all start back to Montana together. I knew if I was there that night that that's what had happened. So I decided to beat it. One of the other girls had a farm across the river in Kansas. She said I could stay with her. So I went down to the Blue Dragon last night and sang just for the first show. Then I told him I was quitting. I've been wanting to find a new job anyway. Then I picked up my share of the kitty. But darn it, I had to go and tell him I was taking the midnight bus. They had to go and tell Bo, of course, when he come in a little after 11. He paid him $50 to find out. So I went down to the bus station and hadn't even gotten my ticket. When here come Bo and Birch, he just steps up to the ticket window and says, three tickets to Montana. I didn't know what to say. Then he picked me up and dragged me to the bus and put me on it. And I've been on it ever since. And somewhere, down deep inside, I got the funniest feeling I'm going to end up in Montana. Tell me something, Verge. We've been together since my folks died. <clears throat> well, I was wondering if maybe I didn't spoil your chances of settling down. Nah, you never did, Bo. Uh, I used to tell myself you did, but I just want an excuse. But you've been looking after me since I was 10. Could have married up, too. Was you ever in love? Once. Before I went to work at your daddy's ranch. What happened? Nothing. You didn't ask her to marry her? No. Why not? 
Well, there comes a time in every fellow's life, Bo, when he's just got to give up his own ways. How do you mean? Well, I was always kind of uncomfortable around this girl. She was sweet, nice, and kind of refined. I was always scared I'd say or do something wrong. Ah, I know what you're saying. It's cowardly me, I suppose, but every time I get back from court, I go back to the bunkhouse. All the boys were sitting around <coughs> drinking, smoking, chewing. Well, I just relaxed so much, I didn't want to give it up. Yeah, girls can sure scare a fella. Now I'm kind of ashamed. You are? Yeah, Bo, a fella can't depend all the time on his buddies. Why don't she like me, Verge? Well... Tell me the truth. Maybe you don't go about it right. But what do I do wrong? Sometimes you seem a little bullheaded and mean. I do? Yeah. Well, how's a fella supposed to act? Bo, it seems to me you should be a little bit more gallant. Gallant? Well, I'm as gallant as I know how to be. You hear the way Hank and Arvel talk? About their women when they come back from soldiering in town. Bo, you can't believe everything Hank and Orville tell you. They like to brag. Well, is there any reason a gal wouldn't go for me as soon as she would for Hank or Orville? Well, they're a little older than you. They can be gallant when they want to be. Well, I ain't gonna pretend. I can't blame you. But a gal ought to like me. I can read and write. I'm kind of tidy, and I got good manners, don't I? I'm no judge, Bo. I'm used to you. And I'm, I'm tall and strong. Ain't that what a gal likes? And if I do say so myself, well, I'm pretty good looking. Yeah? Well, when I get dressed up, I'm just, a, just as good looking a guy as a gal might hope to see. Sure you are, Bo. Then hell fire damnation! Why don't she go back up to the ranch with me? Gee, if you only loved him, that would solve everything, wouldn't it? But I don't. So I just can't see myself going to some godforsaken ranch in Montana. Where I'd never see nobody but him and a lot of cows. If you don't love him, it'd be awfully lonely. I don't know why I keep expecting myself to fall in love anyway, but I do. I know I expect to one day. I'm beginning to seriously wonder if there is the kind of love I have in mind. Well, what's that? I don't know. I'm only 19, but I've been going with guys since I was 14. Honest? Honey, I almost married a cousin of mine when I was 14. But Pappy wouldn't have it. I never heard of anyone marrying so young. Down in the Ozarks, we don't waste much time. Anyway, I'm awful glad I didn't marry my cousin Malcolm, because he turned, turned out to be real bad, just like Pappy predicted. But I sure was crazy about him at the time. And I've been losing my head about some guy ever since. But Bo's the first one who wanted to marry me since cousin Malcolm. And naturally, I'd like to get married and all them things, but... But you've never been in love? Maybe I have, and I didn't know it. Maybe I don't know what love is. That's what I mean. Maybe I'm expecting it to be something it ain't. I just feel that no matter how crazy you are about some guy, you gotta feel that... It's hard to put in words, but... You gotta feel that he re respects you. That's what I mean. I should think so. I want a guy I can look up to and respect. But I don't want one that'll browbeat me. And I want a guy that can be sweet to me. But I don't want to be treated like a baby. I just gotta feel that whoever I marry has some real regard for me. Apart from all the loving and sex. You know what I mean? I think so. What are you gonna do when you get back to Kansas City? I don't know. There's a hillbilly program on one of the radio stations there. I might get a job on it. If I don't, I'll probably go work at Lickets or Walgreens and then marry some guy whether I think I love him or not. Who am I to keep insisting you should fall in love? You hear about love when you're a kid and just take it for granted that something really exists. Maybe you have to find out for yourself that it don't. Maybe everyone's afraid to tell you. Gee, maybe you're right. But I sure hope not. I hate to go out in that cold powder room, but... I better not put it off any longer. <coughs> How defiantly we pursue love, like it was an inheritance due, that we had to wrangle about with angry relatives in order to get our share. Well, you shouldn't complain. You've had three wives. Oh, don't shame me. I love them all. With passion. Well, at least I thought I did. I'm sorry if I sounded sarcastic, Dr. Lemon. I didn't mean to be. Don't apologize. 
I'm too egotistical ever to take notice of anything people say. But you're not egotistical at all. Oh, believe me. The greatest egos are those who are too egotistical just to show just how egotistical they are. Oh, I'm sort of idealistic about this. Well, I like to think that people fall in love and stay that way. Maybe forever. man has lost the ability. Maybe man has passed the stage in his evolution wherein love is possible. Maybe life will continue to become so terrifyingly complex that man's anxiety about his mere survival will render him too miserly to give of himself in any true relation. Gee, you're talking over my head. Anyone can fall in love, at least I thought. But and two people, really in love, must give up something of themselves. Yes? That is a gift that men are afraid to make. Sometimes they keep it in their bosoms, <coughs> where it withers and dies. But then they never know love, only its facsimiles, which they seek over and over again in meaningless repetition. Gee, how do we get on to this subject anyway? <laughs> My dear girl, pay no attention to me. For whether there is such thing as love, we can always pretend there is. Let us talk instead of a forthcoming tip to Topeka. Uh, will you wear your prettiest dress? Oh, of course. And if it's a nice day, I'll wear a new dress that Mother bought me for spring. It's a soft rose color with a little lace collar. Ah, oh, you look lovely. Lovely. I know you will. I hope it doesn't embarrass you for me to be speaking these endearments. No, it doesn't embarrass me, Dr. Warner. I'm glad. Just think of me as a folly old fool, will you? And not be troubled if I take just rapturous delight in your sweetness and youth and innocence. For these are qualities where I seek to warm my heart as I seek a fire to warm my hands. Gee, now I am kind of embarrassed. I don't know what to say. Then say nothing. Or nudge me and I'll talk endlessly about the most trivial matters. Oh, Fur, it's cold. Virgil, I wish you'd play another song. I think we all could use something to cheer us up. Well, I'll make a deal with you, miss. I'll play if you'll sing. Hey, I have an idea. Let's have a floor show. We all here can do something. A brilliant idea. Straight from Chaucer. You must be Juliet for me. Will you play for us, Rachel? Well, I don't play opera or rock and roll. Will you do something? It won't be any fun unless we all take part. Ma'am, I never was no play actor. You can stay in the Gettysburg Address. Well, I ain't gonna say it now. Well, how about some rope tricks? Now, you got your rope out in the bus, and I can get it for you as you know. Oh, please, rope tricks sound like so much fun. No! I ain't gonna get it for a lot of strangers and make a fool of myself. <laughs> I guess he means it, Ned. Shucks. Bo, I don't see why you couldn't cooperate a little. Burge, I got too much on my mind to worry about doing stunts. You'll sing first, won't you, Sherry? I will for a piece of pie and another cup of coffee. Sure. Virgil, can you play for me? Well, if you start me out, I think I can pick out the chords. And you'll read poetry first, won't you? Why, I intend to play Romeo opposite your Juliet. Gee, I don't know if I can remember the lines. Sometimes one can find Shakespeare among the many lurid novels of juvenile delinquents. Ah, here we are. Four tragedies of William Shakespeare. With my compliments. That's my seat. You can have it. If I read it over a couple of times, it'll come back. My dear, I know the entire play by heart. I can recite it backwards. I got a costume with me. Where can we change? Um, behind the counter, there's a mirror above the face. She shines up to you like a kitten to milk. Can I help if I'm so darn attractive to women? <laughs> oh shucks, Bo. It don't mean nothing. Maybe it don't mean nothing to you. Oh, Bo, she was being nice to me, because I was playing my harmonica. Harmonica music's kind of tender. Gals, they seem to like it. Tender? Yeah. Gals like things to be tender. They do? Well, sure they do, Bo. A fellow tries to be tender, and someone else comes along and makes a sap out of him. Well, sometimes, Bo, but not always. Well, you've just got to take that chance. Well, I always, I always tried to be a decent sort of fella, but I don't know if I can be tender or not. Well, I think you can. 
Now you remember how we used to go hunting? When you never could shoot one of them deer with the big sad eyes. Well, then you could jump a ball or not. Are you making fun of me? No, Bo. I'm just trying to show you got tender side to you. That's all. I suppose I do. Well, of course you do. Well, then how come Cherry don't come and talk sweet to me like she does to you? Well, Bo, you got a tender side to you, but you don't know how to show it. I don't? No, you just don't know how. Well, how's the fella go about showing his tender side? Well, I don't know as I can tell you, Bo. Will you go first, Virgil? Well, that's all right by me. <laughs> okay, then I'll act as master of ceremonies. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Grace's Diner tonight presents its gala floor show of celebrated artists from all over the world. Our first number tonight will be that musical cowboy, Mr. Virgil... Virgil Blessing. Virgil Blessing, who will entertain you on his harmonica. <laughs> Cherry! Terry, I think you're misunderstanding me. Don't you come back here. Who drinks them? Terry, I think you got me all wrong. You see, I'm really a very tender person. You just don't know it. Be quiet. The show started. Terry, I'm so tender that I can't go deer hunting because I just couldn't shoot uh, one of those sweet little deer with the sad eyes. I am interested. You ain't? No. And furthermore, I think you're a louse for coming over here and talking while your friend's trying to you talk like you're throwing up more about birds than you do with me. Would you go away and leave me alone? Terry, did I ever tell you about my color television set with a 46-inch screen? One million times. No, go away. Bravo. Will you play us another? No, not right now. I'm ready to hear y'all do something. Watch, she cares how tender I am. Are you ready? I consider myself so. Will you be our prompter? Well, it's kind of fun and written, but I'll try. What do we use for a balcony? That offers a problem. What is these folks going to do, Verge? Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. Shakespeare? This Romeo is a great lover, Bo. If you watch me, you can pick up a few counts. I'm ready. What, what soft light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and I, Juliet, no, Juliet is the sun. Oh, well, they're ready to start. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness a playing of the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. Dr. Gerald Lyman will portray Romeo, and I'll be Juliet. My name's Elma Duckworth. The scene is set at the Capulet's home in Verona, Italy. The counter's supposed to be a balcony. <laughs> he just had scars that never fell to wound. But soft. What light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Oh, Romeo! Arise, fair son. Where, where art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, but be sworn, my love, and I will no longer She speaks. Capulet. Yes, she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold is not to me she's beast. Her she ain't bold is drunk. <laughs> some business to entreat her eyes to twinkle in her spheres. Till they return. I and me! Oh, speak again, bright angel. Thou art as glorious this night, being all my head as a winged messenger of heaven. Virg, I don't Until understand I one of these words. Of it's Romeo and Juliet, for God's sake. He shut up. Lazy pacing clouds and sails upon the bosom uh. of the air. Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What is a Montague? Is it not hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man? Oh, be so I take thee at thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. 
Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. Who art thou, though, that so bescreened in night so stumblest on my counsel? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself. Because it is an enemy to they. <laughs> My name is hateful to myself. Well, Dr. Lyman, are you all right? <coughs> Let us not continue this meaningless lack. Did I do something wrong? You couldn't possibly do anything wrong if you tried. I could try and read the lines. Don't. Don't. Just tell your audience that Romeo is simply fraught with remorse. Verge, that's the way to make love. I'm giving it up right now. <laughs> feeling very well. I, I, I tried to prompt them. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> we only have one more number anyway. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next number is Mademoiselle Sherry, <laughs> the International Shotsu, director of the Blue Dragon Night Club in I 
I can have no one interfering in my ways. Bo, you can't pick a fight with the sheriff, Bo. My God, this ain't no man ever got the best of me. Ain't no man ever gonna. It takes strong men and women to love. People strong enough to love without humiliation. People big enough to live within a whole wide new dimension. And people brave enough to bear the responsibility of being loved and not viewed as a burden. I never had the generosity to love, to build my own private self just as a woman, for I was weak. Somehow I thought the gift would lessen me. Me! Soon you will turn from a girl into a woman. A bright, loving, intelligent woman. Who could only pity me? For I'm a child. I'm a drunken, unruly child. And I've no place in my heart for a true woman. Oh, let me get you something. Don't. Seek the icy comfort of the restroom. <laughs> Elma, honey, what's the matter? What was he saying to you, Elma? Miss? Miss, would you help us? The sheriff says if you don't press charges, he'll let Bo to get back on the bus, if it ever goes. So he can come back here and start mauling me again? You won't do that no more, Miss. I promise. You promise? What about him? I, I think we can trust him now, miss. That's what I thought before. Nothing doing. He takes hold of a woman and kisses her like he was Napoleon. He was evident to know I told you this, miss. He'd kill me, but we're the first woman he ever made love to at all. Ha! I sure don't believe that. It's true, miss. Round of the women is just shy as a rabbit. My God. Just take my life. Don't meet him in Tahiti or any place else. Grace, for Christ's sake, who puked all over the back house? Oh. <laughs> Come on, Virg, let's go. I'm sure glad you're going to help us, miss. 
But if you're telling me a fib just to get him out of jail, I'll never forgive you. It's no fitness. You're the first woman ever made love to at all. Well, I sure ain't never had that honor before. It's still bed. I'll be glad when you all get out because I can go to bed. I'm tired. Have you had enough of me, baby? You know, I was kind of glad the hobby was blocked tonight. You are? Gives a chance to become acquainted, didn't it? Kind of. Well, plug in three times a week, then pulling out. But I always left just wondering what he was like, Grace. I always wondered about you, too, Carl. You did? Yeah, but you need to go blabbing anything to the other drivers. What makes you think so? Well, I don't like men talking to get together worse than women. Not me, Grace. I certainly don't have to get the drivers on this route. Some of them especially get the idea that I'm going to serve men and warm up the order over the counter. Sure, I get you. But you kind of liked me, didn't you? Maybe I did. Yeah? Yeah? You know what I first liked about you, Carl? It was your hands. I like a man with big hands. You got everything, baby. One of the highway trucks just stopped by. They say it won't be very long now. I hope so. Everything uh, peaceful? Yes, well. <laughs> Cowboy, you're holding it grudges. I think you would ask yourself when you've done how you've been in my place. I couldn't let you carry up the little lady when she didn't want to be taken, could I? Well, could I? I don't feel like talking, mister. Well, I could. And another thing. That little lady, she wanted to, you know what she could do? She could press charge and have you sent to the penitentiary for violation of the Man Act. The what act? The Man Act. To go over the state line against her will. That'd be a serious charge, Bo. But I loved her. That don't make any difference, cowboy. Man's got a right to the things that he loves. Not unless he deserves them. I'm a hardworking man. I own my own ranch, and I got sixty thousand dollars in the bank. Man don't deserve the things he loves unless he can be a little humble about getting them. Well, I ain't gonna get down on hands and knees and start begging. Well, being humble ain't the same thing as being wretched. I had to learn that myself once too. It wasn't quite as old as you. And I stole horses instead of women because he could sell horses. <laughs> One day I stole a wrong horse off the wrong man, the Reverend Hezekiah Pearson. I never thought I'd get mine from any preacher, but I have it was very fair. He gave me every chance to put myself to clear, but I would admit the horse was his. Finally, he did what he had to. Thrashed me with an inch of my life. I was miserable because it was the first time I had to admit I was wrong. Finally, after a few days, I went and talked to him about it. And I joined his church and we was bosom pals. So he died a few years ago. <clears throat> has he, uh, has he done what I asked him to do? Not yet, Sheriff. How come he's so scared? Who says I'm scared? Give me a word, didn't you? Well, I'll do it. Just give me some time. Okay. But I'll warn you, it won't do any good unless you mean it. I'll mean it. Okay, then. Go ahead. <coughs> Ma'am, I want to apologize. What for? For causing such a commotion. I didn't mean to apologize to me, cowboy. I'd like a good fight. You're welcome at Gracie's Diner anytime. I mean anytime. Thanks. Miss, uh, I must have acted like a hoodlum. I apologize. Well, that's all right. Thank you, miss. I'm awfully sorry we didn't get to see your rope tricks, though. They ain't much. Have I got to wake up the professor to apologize to him? No. You should overlook the professor. I can't do it. Oh, Bo. I just can't do it. Why not? Well, she'd have no respect for me now. She saw me beat. Whether you was beat or not, you still owe that girl an apology. And you're going to give her one. Otherwise, I'm not letting you back on that bus. Go on, Bo. Go on. All right. I'll, I'll try. Jerry. Yeah? 
Terry, it wasn't right of me to treat you the way I did. You know, dragging you onto the bus and trying to force you to marry me whether you wanted to or not. Do you think you could ever forgive me? Well, I guess I've been treated worse in my life. Terry, I got you here. I think I ought to get you back to the style. I'll take that. Did the sheriff make you do this? No. By God, he didn't say nothing about my giving you money. That was his idea, miss. Well, I think it's a mighty fine one. You don't have to give me this much, Bo. I don't want you to have it, Cherry. Thanks. I can sure use it. And I wish you good luck. Honest, I do. I wish you the same, Bo. <coughs> well, I, I guess I said everything that's to be said. So. So long. That wasn't so bad, was it, cowboy? I'd rather break in wild horses than have to do it again. <laughs> hey, Grace. How's the headache? Huh? Well, a while ago, you said you had a headache. How is it? Oh, I feel fine now, Will. <laughs> have a good walk, Carl? Yeah, sure. Well, I think you better go upstairs. Someone left your overshoes outside the door of Grace's apartment. <laughs> right now, Grace, we'll have a cup of coffee and uh, one of them sweet rolls. Well, we say we go over and get ourselves a bite of breakfast. I ain't hungry. Well, how about a cup of coffee? I couldn't get it down. Now, what's the matter, Bo? You ought to feel pretty good. The sheriff let you go. I now. might as well stay in that jail. Now, what kind of talk is that, Bo? Bus will leave soon. We'll be heading back to the ranch. <coughs> I don't care if I never see that dang ranch again. Why, Bo? You worked half your life earning the money to build it up. The loneliest place I ever did see. Well, I never thought so. It'll be like, it'll be like going back to a graveyard. Bo, I heard Hank and Orwell talking to the school marm, Lizzo the Steppens. They say she's a real looker. I ain't interested in those school marm. Bo, you're young. You'll find lots of women. Women that'll love you, too. I want cherry. Oh, Bo. Bird, you go get yourself some meat. I ain't hungry. My God, the lines are up. Grace's diner. It is? Okay, I'll tell him. The road's cleared now, but you're gonna have to put on your change because the road's almost left. God damn. The road's clear, folks. The bus will be in 20 minutes until we get the chains on. Unless somebody wants to help me. Okay, Carl, I'll give you a hand. Bo? Yeah? There's something I've been meaning to tell you, and it's kind of personal and kind of embarrassing, too, but I ain't the kind of girl you thought I was. What do you mean, Jerry? Well, I guess some people say I live in a wicked life, and I guess I have. What are you trying to say? Well, I just figured since you found me at the Blue Dragon, you took it for granted I had other boyfriends for you. You had? Yes, Bo. Quite a few. Ferg's told me that, but I wouldn't believe it. Well, it's true. So you see, I ain't the kind of girl you thought I was. Dr. Lyman! Dr. Lyman! Where am I? Oh, it's you. What a sweet awakening. How do you feel? That is not a polite question. <laughs> How long have I been asleep here? Well, a couple hours. Sometimes nature blesses me with a total blackout. I seem to remember absolutely nothing of our performance. How were we? Oh, marvelous. Oh, that's good. Now, I think I'll have a cup of that coffee you were trying to force me last night. Okay. Can I get you something to eat? No, nothing to eat. Oh, you really must eat something. Must I? Really? Oh, well. Um, for your sweet sake, I'll have a couple of three-minute eggs, uh, some toast, and some orange juice. But I'm doing this just for you, mind you. Only for you.
Bo. I'm gonna go help the driver with his chains. You stay here, you take care of that hand. Jerry, would, would I be molesting you if I said something? No. Well, s since you brought the subject up, you are the first girl I ever had anything to do with. By God, I never thought I'd hear myself say that. But I said it. I never would have guessed it, Bo. You see, I've lived all my life on a ranch. And, well, I guess I didn't know much about women, because uh, different from men. Well, naturally. Anyway, it's, I was always so scared every time I got around one. It was aggravating. You wasn't scared with me, Bo. So when I walked into your nightclub and you sang my favorite song and you winked at me a couple times, remember? Yeah, I remember. Well, I, I guess I'm kind of green, but no gal had done that to me before, so I thought you were singing your songs just for me. Well, you did kind of attract me, Bo. Anyway, you, you see, you were so pretty and you seemed so kind of warm-hearted. I felt like I could love you. And I did. Bo, you really think you could love me? Terry, I, I couldn't be familiar with the gal I didn't love. Oh boy, the next stop is Topeka. How you feeling, cowboy? I ain't the happiest kid I was ever born. Well, just because you ain't happy now, don't mean you won't be happy tomorrow. You like shaking hands? Come on, Bo. Shake his hand. I don't mind. Just want to let you know that there are no hard feelings. So long, cowboy. So long. Grace, I'll be going now. See you on Monday. Thanks for helping me with the chains, Will. I'll be pulling out as soon as I finish the course. Fine. Montana's not such a bad place, miss. Nice fellow, Bo. Maybe I'll think so someday. Well, Bowie, we best be boarding the bus. Cherry. Hi, Bo. Cherry, if you were to give your permission, it'd be all right. I'd like to kiss you goodbye. You would? I'd like you to kiss me, Bo. I really would. Bo, I think this time when you kiss me, it ought to be different. Oh. Carly, when you kiss someone for serious, it's scary, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Sure don't look like he's molesting her now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I could say in all honesty that this was the best breakfast I've ever eaten, uh, but it wouldn't be much of a compliment because uh, I haven't had so many breakfasts. Why, it's my favorite meal. My dear. Let's call for a little spree, shall we? I don't think you want to go traipsing around the state's capital with an old reprobate like me. I shall continue my way to Denver. I think it's best. Thank you. Ah, oh, it is so gratifying to know that one is doing the right thing. I wonder if I don't choose to always. What do you mean? Always just rambling. You know, while I'm in the vicinity of Topeka, I should look in at that hospital and seek some advice. Well, sometimes their patients come in here. I don't see anything wrong with them. Friends have been hinting me for quite a while that I should be psychoanalyzed. I don't know whether they had my best interests at the heart of theirs. No. Young people never do. Although I don't think I'd care to be psychoanalyzed. I rather cherish myself as I am. Goodbye, dear girl. You're the greatest Juliet since Olivia Hussey. Thank you, Dr. Lyman. I feel it's been an honor to know you. You're the smartest man I've ever met. The 
smartest. Really? <laughs> oh, yes. I'm terribly smart. <laughs> But wouldn't it be nice to be intelligent? Hey, you never heard about the professor? A police detective in a Kansas City bus stand is a friend of mine. You know what he said? He said the fake professor was loitering around the school. Honest? They checked his record and found he's been in trouble several times for messing around with young girls. Oh my God, did you tell Will? Sure, I told him. Didn't get everything on him, so there's nothing Will can do. But what gets me is why he calls himself a doctor. Is he some kind of phony? He's a doctor of philosophy, Carl. What's that? It's the highest degree there is for scholarship. If you can have philosophy enough to keep out of trouble. So you see me go? No, I told you I'm tired. You know, <coughs> I get to thinking, what the hell good is marriage? We have to book the same broad day and night and look her in the morning when she's got a bad disposition. This way suits me fine. I got no complaints either. Incidentally, are you married, Carl? But who said I was married, Grace? You tell me, and I'll fix relax, it. Relax, relax. See you the day after tomorrow. You never know what may happen in 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, boy. He still never said whether he was married. Cherry. Yeah? Cherry, I've been talking with my buddy here. And he thinks I'm virgin enough for the two of us. <laughs> Honest, did Virgil say that? Yeah. And Cherry, I like you like you are, so I don't care how you got that way. Oh, God. That's the sweetest, tenderest thing that was ever said to me. Cherry, it's, it's awful hard for a fella, for once he's been turned down once already, to get up enough guts to try again. You don't need guts, Bo. I don't. That's the last thing in the world you need. Well, anyways, I, I ain't got no luck now, so I'm gonna have to say what's in my heart. Yeah? I still wish you was coming back up to Montana with me more than anything else I know. You do? Well, I'd go anywhere in the world, world with you now, Bo. Anywhere at all. You would? You would? I knew this was gonna happen all the time. She, I didn't. Birds, did you hear that? She's coming back up to the ranch with us. We're gonna get married. Ain't it wonderful when someone so awful turns out to be so nice? I'm going back to the ranch. We're getting married. Hey, all poor for Christ's sake. Come on, Bird, let's get going. Come on, y'all rack. Listen, Bo. I ain't going with it. You don't need me no more. Wait, what? I ain't going with you, Bo. What do you know about that? It's best I don't, Bob. Just one blink of catastrophe after another. I, uh, I got another job in mind, Bo. This seems mighty good. I've been looking after some cattle. I meant to tell you about the fall. Bert, I can't believe you leave your old sidekick. You're joking. No, no I ain't joking. I ain't. I'll be a... Virgil, I wish you'd come with us. I liked you forever, like Bo. Bird, you know Cherry likes you. That, that's not the reason, is it? It's just best I don't. I know it is. Oh, well, who's going to look after the cattle? Hey, everybody as good as I ever was. Bird, why do you have to go pull a stunt like this? Oh, get along with you. Bus driver's not going to wait all day. Hey, go to Bird, you're my buddy. Come with Cherry. What do you mean? Well, it just don't make sense in not coming. It's plumb crazy. Sometimes people have their own reasons. Oh. I, I just hate to think of getting along with that old Verge. In a couple weeks, you'll never miss me. Oh, Verge. Get along with me now. Virgil, you'll come and visit us, won't you? I'll be up in the summer. Where are you going to be? I'll write the address. I haven't got time right now. It's Come on, Cherry, let's make it fast.
Albuquerque? Yeah, well, I guess that's as good a place as any. Poor Dr. Lyman. Hey, did you hear Carl told me about that guy? No, Grace, who was it? Well, according to Carl, they run him out of Kansas City. I don't believe I it. I called him and straight to the detective at the bus terminal. <coughs> what did Dr. Lyman do? Well, lots of old soldiers like him just can't let young girls alone. So it's a good thing you didn't meet him in Topeka. You come tell your Aunt Grace. I guess I'm kind of stupid. Everyone's got to learn. Now, money for sure, then order some cheese. Oh, I'll remind you, Grace. Oh, my honey, the Aunt Grace? I could kill a little mess if you're saying anything about me and Carl. I didn't want you to know. Well, I don't know why I should know, Grace. I don't want to be a baby forever. Of course you don't, but still, you're a kid, and I don't want to set no examples or anything. Do you think you can overlook an nothing bad of me? Sure, Grace. Because I'm a restless sort of woman, and every once in a while, I gotta have me a man just to keep myself from getting grouchy. It's none of my business. Hey, you wanted to make love to me. You're getting stuck on yourself. Oh, I won't, Grace. Oh, it's just nice to know that someone can feel that way. You're not gonna have any trouble. Wait to get the clothes and start meeting all those cute boys. Run along now, honey. All I gotta do is empty the garbage. Okay. Good night, Grace. See you Monday. Good night. Oh, good night, Virgil. We sure loved your music. Thank you, miss. <coughs> Any place warm I can stay till 8 o'clock? Now that the police station's closed, I don't know where you could go. Unless you wanted to take a chance of waking up the man that runs the hotel. No, no, I, w I wouldn't want to be in trouble. He'll be a bus back to Kansas City in a few minutes. I'll put all the sign on the stop. No, no, there's no point going back there. Oh, well, then I'm sorry, mister, but you're just left out in the cold. Yeah, <laughs> well, I guess that's what happens to some people. 